His eyes, his eyes were burning into mine the way he was leaning over me, towering over me. His intense stare, the tension, and those lips. Damn those lips. His tongue darting out to lick those sexy lips, making me swallow hard. I knew he was just teasing me. I knew his stare meant nothing. But still, I was hypnotized. My body was shaking under his eyes, and every last bit of my skin was tingling, wishing it was more than just him having fun teasing me. But it wasn't, and with a laugh, he stretched his back, getting off his bike and unzipping his leather jacket, looking like the cover model of some biker magazine. I shook my head over and over, giving him a smile as I tried to get myself together. This guy was trouble. Sophomore Campus Moon, leader of the engineer faculty, leader of the university bike club, and leader of the Insane Four, a well-known gang at our university. Only the four top students from our four best faculties were allowed to even approach him. Then who am I for him to tease me like that, you might ask? Well, the answer is simple. I'm his servant. Why? That's a way longer story and one that only my closest friends know about. It all started when I was in the 10th grade. He was in the 11th grade. Last year of high school, middle of the semester, and he already had invitations for direct admission from many universities. Straight-A student, basketball player, already owner of the sexiest bike I've ever seen, and the most popular guy in our school. Everybody knew his name. He even had his own fan club. Me? I was just a loser. Stressing on the was, but more on that later. Thick glasses, hunched down back, and with bad skin and pimples everywhere, I was a total loser. Now, add the fact that I was bullied and that I only wore oversized uniforms because I hadn't hit my last growth spurt, I really was the laughingstock of the whole school. Even the juniors would make fun of me. Slightly chubby and with no backbone, I would hunch and shuffle around, always hiding behind books. I was just miserable. A loser in its best definition. But this isn't really about me. And I'm sure you had enough of me moping about myself. Let's go back to him. It all happened a few weeks before the first semester break. It was close to the midterms, and we were all busy studying and worrying about our grades. Well, some were. I didn't mind too much. I was always perfectly average, and that was enough for me. Not that my parents were happy about it, but the deal was, as long as I kept my grades good enough to be able to attend any university at all... They wouldn't pressure me. I had my own dream, you know. I wanted to be a composer for film music. Ever since I was a little kid, those epic soundtracks would take me away into a different world. Without the music, the film or show would only be half as exciting. And I wanted to be the one to bring people the same excitement those films and their soundtracks brought me. Back then, it was a day like every other. I was on my way to school for the morning assembly, and like always, there was a big ruckus. Girls screaming and taking photos when the bikers pulled up in front of the school. It was always the same thing every morning. I mean, honestly, what was wrong with these girls? He would be there with his tight leather jeans and his leather jacket getting off the bike every single morning, pulling the same show every single morning, and still, every single morning. They would gather and scream and fight to take pictures of him. <laughs> Shaking my head, I walked past them, hiding away behind the crowd to get into the schoolhouse. And like every day, there she was. Miss T for Tiger. She was the fiercest teacher at school. Every morning, she would stand by the school gate and would scold you till you forgot what day of the week it was if she could find the smallest flaw in your uniform. And let me tell you something. Leather jeans and biker jackets definitely didn't meet any of our school uniforms requirements. 
That's why I tried my best every morning to arrive at the same time as those three bikers would, just to make sure the tiger's attention was elsewhere and I wouldn't have to deal with her scolding. Slipping past when I heard her raise her voice calling out to those guys on their bikes, I heaved a sigh. Happy I once again made it without trouble. And of course, after I made it to safety, I turned around to watch with a smile of satisfaction how others got the scolding I just slipped past. Is this how your parents taught you? Where is your proper uniform? Tuck in your shirt. Over there, the skirt is way too short. And you three, turn around. Without a proper uniform, you won't be attending any classes today, and you will get your scores reduced. Listening, even I shrugged in my head, hiding from her voice. She was in an even worse mood than normal, and her three main targets didn't make it any better. Laughing, they stood there, leaning against their bikes. Ma'am, we are wearing the correct uniform. Let me show you, he said. Of course it was him. Who else was insane enough to look for trouble with a tiger? And to put the cherry on top of his insanity, he started taking off his clothes in the middle of the crowd, right in front of the school gates. He was indeed wearing his blue shorts uniform under his biker outfit. Listening to the girls screaming, one would assume he just ripped off his shirt or confessed his love, but nope. He was just taking off his jacket and his jeans, revealing a proper, tucked-in uniform. It was the same every day. They would always come up with new ways to make trouble like that. Lucky enough, it had already been half a semester since they came to school like this, so by now the fainting was reduced to one or two girls in the morning, since he didn't actually reveal anything. Again, shaking my head, I walked into the building. The show was over, and I had classes to prepare for. The rest of the school day was the same as always. Hiding from bullies, sleeping during class, running away to find a safe spot to eat lunch, and laughing about stupid things with the few friends I had. What wasn't the same would happen after school. To be precise, after my club activities and my music lessons. I had a lot of after-school activities every day since I wasn't really interested in the things I studied at school. I took composition lessons and instrument lessons after school, which was also the reason why I joined the music club, so I could learn the most basic instruments like guitar and piano in school and thus focus my energy and money on the more exotic ones during my lessons. Later in the evening, like always, I would join my music school seniors to play the drums for their band. It was my part-time job and the best way to make money, especially since no one would see chubby little me behind the big drums, the handsome lead singer, and the sexy guitarist. But not this time. This is when a normal day changed into something different, something that would lead me to where I am today, two years later, a servant for the most popular guy in my university. I would always join the band Wednesdays and Fridays, since those were the two days they normally had gigs. It took me a lot of convincing to let my parents join in on Wednesdays, since it was a school night, but after I took the time and broke it down for them financially, they agreed, but under the condition that I would call them right before and right after the gig, and that my senior would drop me off at home. Oh, and of course, the most important rule, no alcohol. I was allowed to go to the bar, play the drums, and then go home. That was it. But I didn't mind. It made good money, and it was a school day anyways. Friday was a totally different story. But let's leave that for another time, since the fateful day was a Wednesday. I hid myself behind the drums as best I could, like every day, and smoothly finished the performance. As always, the bar was packed with girls cheering for our lead singer, and boys trying to get our guitarist's attention. And as always, she just brushed them off in a chic, cold manner, turning her attention to me. Hurry, so I can take you home. We can party double this Friday for ditching today. Truth was, she wanted to leave herself, so she used me as an excuse to ditch the place during weekdays. Most people wouldn't believe it, but our cool, chic, and dark guitarist by night was a top-of-her-class, second-year law student by day, so she always took the responsibility to take me home, 
taking the opportunity to leave and get some sleep before her morning lectures. Same as every night, I ditched my school uniform before the gig so I wouldn't get in trouble, and was carrying it in my bag as I was ready to leave. But tonight, it was a clear mistake. Bumping into someone, my bag dropped and my uniform fell out. Clearly, that alone wasn't that bad. But this fateful moment was the start of the semester break from hell, and the event that would make me what I am today, a servant. Looking at the school uniform, I leaned down to pick it up, not thinking too much about it. But someone else already grabbed it. Smiling, I tried to take it, just to have it pulled away, making me look up at the owner of that elegant but manly hand. The hand was attached to a muscular arm, and following up the arm, I saw a white, tight-fit t-shirt, hardly hiding the owner's tattoos. Looking up further, I finally saw his face. Every color left mine when I saw his face. Mr. Biker Magazine cover model himself. Fuck. I cursed in my mind. I was sure that guy would have no idea who I was, but he would recognize the uniform. Hey, look here. Isn't that our school? What's a high school student doing here at this hour playing in a band? He sneered a little, looking right at me. Instinctively, I hunched over, pulling in my neck like a little turtle, making myself as small as possible, not wanting to be seen. Nong Yu, hurry! Perfect! It couldn't get better. The guitarist just called my name to make me hurry, and at the same time gave it away to those guys. Now, I was in a total ditch. You, huh? Well, little you... What would the school say if they knew how their students behave outside class? I couldn't help but snort. This guy wasn't for real, was he? I mean, look at him. Clearly tipsy, his arm around a young pretty girl, and bottles of alcohol on the table. But, then again, who would tell on him? Hearing that snort, you can guess what happened. My ass hit the floor as I was angrily pushed. With a sigh, I ignored the pain, looking up. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Standing up, I gave him a polite bow, apologizing. Uh, please return my uniform? Stretching out my hand, I really hoped he would do it. But come on, the story would be over right here if he would just be all polite like, Oh, I'm sorry, here's your uniform. I hope you didn't get hurt too badly falling down. So yeah. I'm sure you can guess what happened next. No way. If you want this back, you can come find me at school tomorrow. Let's see what they have to say about this. Sneering and laughing, the boy held this, meaning my school uniform, up so I couldn't reach. Sighing again, I couldn't do anything but sign my own death warrant. Nodding my head, I gave him and his friends a polite greeting. Then, I hope you will return it to me tomorrow. And with that, I turned around and left. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I didn't have any backbone or any energy to fight or even a rebellious thought back then. The reason I left was simple. Start trouble here and you will not only get served, but might actually get in deep trouble. If I leave and push it until tomorrow, at least at school I know where to run and where to hide. I might be a coward, sure, but I was a coward that would choose his own grave, and it wouldn't be this pub. The car ride home was quiet. P. Minnie, the guitarist, dropped me off. I told my mom that I left my uniform at school and would bring it back tomorrow, and then I went straight to my room. I had eaten dinner before the gig, so I wasn't hungry, and to be honest, even if I hadn't eaten before, the fear twisting in my intestines would have made it impossible to eat anyways. I was turning and twisting in bed that night, awaiting my judgment day. I'm sure normal schools wouldn't make a big deal out of a student working part-time or even being at a pub. They would just keep it quiet and hope said students wouldn't ruin the school's reputation. But, well, that's what you get for attending one of the more prestigious schools. They had a no-tolerance rule, and the second anything that could even remotely taint the school's reputation got their attention, it would be strictly supervised. 
and made sure to be kept contained, and the student would be punished accordingly. If those guys had decided to tell on me, the story would have turned out differently, and I would have been suspended from school, grounded for the rest of my life, and forever tainted. But come on, you all knew that they wouldn't just tell on me, right? So I won't create false tension and just tell you what happened the next day during lunch when I found the courage to ask for my uniform. I was shaking on my way down to the basketball court at the back of the school. I told you it was a luxurious school. You could tell those guys were there by the screaming flock of girls around the court. I mean, not to be spoiling the fun or anything, but what's so important about guys running around in tank tops, dripping with sweat, that you had to scream for them? Not that I didn't know how to admire some nice moves or a good shot, but really, they weren't that good. Maybe it was just the fact that I'm not a girl that made it impossible for me to understand that kind of behavior. I don't know, but... Anyways, here I was, standing surrounded by screaming girls trying to hide myself while looking for a chance to approach those guys without becoming the center of attention. Lucky enough, I got my chance when the break was almost over, and the three troublemakers, also known as the current owners of my shirt, decided they would skip class and thus ditched the group to sneak away. Following them to one of the side gates of the school, I softly called out before they could leave, I'm sorry. I wanted to bury myself as deep as possible at what happened right after. I wasn't that tall to begin with, but those three, they really all reached about 180 to 190 centimeters and were just giants. And all three of them turned around at the same time with eyes that were cold enough to make me freeze. My voice only a whisper and shaking with fear. I took all my courage to ask my school uniform shirt back. What I was met with was laughter and them making fun of me. Still, in my mind, this was a big victory for me since I didn't pee my pants in fear and actually managed to ask. So you can say what you want. This was a victory. At least for me. With my heart rate shooting up to definitely dangerous territory and every cell in my brain screaming to RUN I stood my ground, nailed to the floor, waiting for those three to finish laughing and talk to me. All I wanted was my uniform. I didn't care how I got it back or what price there was to pay. Eyes on my feet, I waited when suddenly everything went white. Someone had thrown my uniform right on my head, covering my vision, but before I could grab it and run away, the back of my collar was seized and held in place. Not so fast, boy. I heard the laugh in his voice loud and clear. I'm not returning this to you so you can run away with it. Listen, you. Let's make a deal. Shivering, I turned back and pulled the shirt down to look at those three giants in front of me. I wasn't a strong kid or athletic, so I couldn't get away, even if I wanted. What do you want with me? I asked in fear, hoping that I could get out of this without facing some pain, or worse, humiliation. Well, I'm not sure. You're small, weak, unathletic, stupid, ugly, and really, just a loser. What could you offer? Ah, oh, right. There is one thing you could be useful for. I was just looking at my feet. Every word he said was true. I was all of those things, and I really had no idea how the hell I was going to be able to help them, or what deal I could strike. But hearing the last sentence, I looked up, hope filling my heart. If there was something I could do, maybe I wouldn't get suspended from school, and would actually be able to get my uniform back. So without thinking, I nod my head. Yes, yes, anything. And thus, I sealed my fate. Hey, before you all run ahead with your thoughts, no, I didn't strike a deal to be his servant. Honestly, why would I still do the job if it was only over one stupid school uniform? I'm no longer in high school, and I'm actually playing in a band now, with university support. So there's no way in hell that would be the reason why I'm still his servant after two years. I told you, it will be a long story. So get yourselves together and listen. 
here is what actually happened. With three similarly evil smiles, they leaned over me. You're part of the band, right? Every Wednesday and Friday, you have a gig at the local pub. This semester break, you will take us there for every one of your gigs and use your status as a band member to get us in without trouble, their leader spoke. And get some girls for us, one of them added. Yes, their leader was damn sexy and hella good looking, so he never had trouble with girls. But the other two, well, not that they were ugly, but they had those typical everyday looks about them that made them, right next to the leader, just lose their appeal. They were the type of guy you would normally look at once thinking, hmm, he doesn't look bad, and then never think about it again. It's the same principle with diamonds. If you see a fake on its own, it looks good. But then when you compare it with the real one, suddenly you see how ugly it is. The pub the band was playing at was really popular with the local university students, especially girls. So of course, every guy wanted to claim it as their hunting grounds but they would always give preferred treatment to girls, and only after let in boys, and only those that were either good-looking or close with the bouncer. I later found out that the trio had a run-in with one of the bouncers, and consequently weren't easily allowed in. Seeing my status as a band member, and the fact that the band was playing Fridays during high season, of course they thought of using me to get into the pub, and to get the attention of some of the girls. Nodding my head over and over, I agreed to the said deal, and finally managed to run away with my legs trembling and tears running down my face. I was scared of them, like a little mouse is scared of the big bad tiger coming to eat it. Not even a cat, a freaking tiger! After that day, things were back to normal. Because of my exams, I had to let one of the other juniors in my music class take over from me for the Wednesday performances as I was forced to study. It was part of the deal with my loving and always worrying parents. During the next few weeks, I would study in the morning, go to my instrument lessons in the afternoon, and listen to my seniors complain about the substitute drummer. <laughs> that last part always made me smile. Knowing there was something I was good in, even better than others, always made me smile. I still played Fridays, but couldn't stay at the pub after the gig, until finally, the long-awaited day of freedom was upon us. The last day of tests, and with that, the beginning of our semester break. When I was young, I always imagined this day to be something dramatic, with people throwing their class notes around to celebrate their freedom, and gathering up after school making campfires with the leftover books and papers you wouldn't need anymore. But... Let's be real, it was just a fantasy. In reality, the last day of class was different. I'm sure you were all in school once and you all remember how it was when, finally, the last exam was over and you were free. Yep, it's the same everywhere. You leave school as quickly as possible while collecting your friends to go out for food and enjoy the freedom, or maniacally obsessing over comparing exam answers or whatever you wanted to do. There was no synchronized paper throwing, no big party, or anything. For me, it wasn't even the end of school. I still had club activities and meetings to talk about. Some weekend boot camps for the club, and just hanging out with my club members. And I even had music classes after because the music school didn't have a semester break. So for me, it wasn't that different. Though I loved my music classes and even did my best to attend some early classes during the semester break... It was still classes, so I didn't really get the feeling of freedom other students got. Well, at least normally, that's what my semester break was all about. But as you remember, not this time. It couldn't be worse. I finished club activities and was ready to leave for music classes and play drums when I walked into a really bad surprise. In front of the school gate was someone waiting for me. At first... I didn't know they were waiting for me, but after getting called out and waved over, I knew. It was a gathering of about five guys with their bikes, and all with their own looks. Let's be honest, in high school, how many good-looking guys did you have? One? Maybe two per, like, grade if you were lucky enough? And those few good-looking guys didn't all get along. 
So if you have a group of five guys that are all popular, it's mostly because one or two of them were good looking and the other ones would get a passing grade in looks because they weren't because they weren't bad to look at, but not like the type you would stop and look at if you saw them in the streets. So I'm saying all with their own looks to them instead of good looking so you don't get the wrong idea about me going to some special school with a lot of good looking guys. Fanatically thinking about why they would call me as I slowly made my way over. Yo, you. These are the guys that will tag along to your gig tonight. Mr. Biker Magazine Model explained. I'm sure you guessed already that he was the one waiting for me in front of the school, so no need to make clear who those others were, right? I nod at him with my head lowered. Understood. I'll get you inside the pub later. For some reason, my answer made them laugh. Confused, I looked up again. Did I say something wrong? I asked, curiosity killing my fear. You really think I'd let you out of my sight before you held up your end of the deal? This was the first time I encountered that look. The intensity it was burning with. The hunger behind it. The need to control and cause pain and trouble. The look that back then, filled me with pure fear, but now fills me with different thoughts. It was the first time he put his eyes on me with that view. It was a soft version of it, since he was still young, and didn't yet know what effect that look would have on a lot of people later on, but it still had the biggest effect on me. Sweat was running down my body, Every small hair on my back was standing straight, and I was frozen on the spot, not able to do anything. With a laugh, he pulled his eyes off me, satisfied to see the fear in my face. Get on his bike, you. We'll keep an eye on you to make sure you don't pull any tricks. The bike he directed me to was the lowest in status. The bike itself was good, but the biker was the one that had the lowest status in the group, making my position clear. I was a tool, or maybe a pet, they could use to get into the pub, and thus needed to keep an eye on me, but didn't actually want to bother with me, so I was pushed to the one that couldn't refuse. The boy I was pushed to did look nice enough to not make me shiver in fear, but I was still cautious. He was riding with the others, so he was definitely part of the gang. The three leading were the boys from my school. After them were the two I didn't know. Back then, I didn't know they were from a different school, but used to be friends with the leader during middle school before he changed schools due to his father's work. Like that, suddenly I was riding with the members of a biker gang as they made their way to my music school to keep me in check until I satisfyingly fulfilled my duty for the first time and showed them that I would stay true to my word. It was honestly a funny picture. The boys knew how to ride, and I was scared out of my wits. Red lights, traffic jams, street signs. Nothing was holy to them, and I don't even want to talk about speed limits. All I could do was tightly grab onto the side of the bike, not wanting to touch the guy in front of me, scared he would get angry. The air was hitting my body. I was wearing a helmet, I wasn't that irresponsible, but I could still feel the wind against me. The speed, the feeling of fear, tasting blood in my mouth from biting my lips tightly to suppress the screams of fear. When we arrived, I couldn't even stand because my knees were so weak. Making fun of me because of that, the group of guys went to get dinner close to the music school building, leaving me finally alone. I was sitting there, on the bench in the lobby like a left alone pet, still scared and shaking. Back then, it took me a long time to get over the fear and attend my classes. After, I was again ganged up by those thugs, but this time, I had both P-Mini and P-Par with me. P-Par is the lead singer of the band, and a big, strong, handsome, self-assured guy. With him next to me, I didn't fear those thugs as much. Are those the friends you invited to the gig tonight? Peepar asked me with his arm around my shoulder, 
and the other squishing my cheek like I was some child. With a smile, I nodded excitedly. I didn't mind his behavior at all. It was just his character, and honestly, I was happy with how he treated me, since him taking a liking to me meant that my status in music school was also raised, knowing that I let Peepar do anything he wanted with me. All right, stop. Don't even go there. He's just a friend, and that guy is probably the straightest guy I've ever met. Peepar would always say that if you tried it all, you know what you want. And for him, what he wants are girls. So I'm like a younger brother to him, or a pet maybe, but more like the type of pet you actually adore and constantly cuddle. He definitely didn't see me as a human being most of the time, but not in a bad way. Like I said, I enjoyed the attention, and Peepar is really an amazing friend slash owner slash big brother to have. Yes, P, that's them, I simply replied, not even bothering with introducing them to each other since, first of all, I didn't think it was worth it, and second of all, I still didn't even know the names of the two guys that weren't in my school, so I just answered his question and turned my attention to the music sheets in my hands making sure to put them away securely. You guys don't mind if I borrow you for a bit. I'll return him to the pub in about an hour. Peepar spoke up with a smile and a polite voice. Of course, they didn't mind at all, since giving me over to someone else meant they could go have fun amongst themselves, and I wasn't going to tag along. Plus, since I was with Peepar, and he was a member of the band too, they didn't have to worry about me not keeping my end of the deal. After I got borrowed, we went to dinner with a few of the music school students. These types of dinners were never anything special and will happen a lot during this story, but since it is the best way to just give you a short overview over my life in music school and to introduce you to some of my friends that will play a role later, I will tell you about this particular dinner. We went to a small street stall with a few tables outside, like always, easily finding a place for six. It was always six of us hanging out. In the beginning, it had been five, but after Peepar adopted me, it became six. First, of course, were Peepar and P. Minnie. Then there was P. Sang, P. Moan, and P. Maya. P. Sang was the bassist of the band, an easygoing man in his third year of university. He was not tall, but also not short, with a rather average face but a gentle and carrying character making him a good friend and someone to rely on. P. Moan was the complete opposite. He was nearly two meters tall. His father was American, and that's where he got his height from. Not only was he tall, though, he was also really athletic. He knew at least four types of martial arts and had been a mixed martial arts champion for his university during the first two years. Like P. Sang, he was the third year now, and it was actually his last year with us since, next semester, he would start his internship. He was a mountain to hide behind, and always ready to help his friends. He was a little hot-headed, but at the same time really patient if it was required. Last was P. Maya. She was P. Sang's girlfriend. A cute, enthusiastic, and pretty girl. She had all the girl-next-door charms with a character that made it easy to get along with her. Those five were the people closest to me outside of my family. Since I was nearly five years younger than the oldest two, and three years younger than the youngest of the group, I really was like their younger brother, or more like their son or pet. I was adopted by all of them soon after Peepar had first introduced me to them and now I was doted on and protected by them. That didn't mean I was safe from their teasing, but if anyone outside this group decided to bully me, they would raise hell to protect their son. I was sitting between P. Moan and P. Minnie, like a little prince getting cared for and doted on by both of them, as well as P. Maya who was sitting across from me, next to her boyfriend. Those guys, are they making you trouble? P. Moan asked with a worried look. I shook my head quickly. No, no, don't worry, P. It's all good. I can take care of it. Assuring them that I was fine, I gave them a smile, turning my attention to the food that kept appearing on my plate due to P. Minnie's good intentions. Good. The second that changes, you let us know, all right? 
making sure that I was okay and that if not, I would tell them, they would turn their attention to their food too. So, since you say you can handle them, which one of them is your husband? Or <laughs> why are they so possessive, even waiting for you in front of the school building? And here we go again. Of course, after they knew I wasn't in danger, they would find any chance to make fun of me. Hey, it's not like that, P. I have a deal with them, and they just want to make sure I keep it. You really think I'd be interested in that type? I asked, denying it. Oh? Then what type are you interested in? Want me to set you up? I looked at P saying in shock. P, have you taken a look at my face? I don't think I can have a type. Why? You look cute. I'm sure there are girls interested in you. P. Minnie, please don't say things like that. I don't want to date until I get into university. Oh, so you don't dress up on purpose? P. Parr looked up at me over the table. I just nod, looking down at my food, hoping that the topic will change. I wasn't confident enough in my own looks to even consider dating, and I knew that before university, said looks wouldn't change much since I still had a lot to work on. But I was trying, fighting my acne with creams and medications and putting money away every day to get my acne scars removed as soon as I finally got it under control. But as of now, I was not cute or good looking. So I made the decision to not date until I was mentally ready to accept myself as somewhat passable. After dinner, we made our way to the club. Ride with me. Chapter 1. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to my story, Ride With Me. And also thank you so much to my narrator because it was a lot of trouble getting here and a lot of trouble actually getting to the point of the story being narrated because I had a lot of trouble with narrators before I found somebody who was actually willing to help me and oh my god, he did such an amazing job. So please check out his other YouTube channel and his other social medias because I will link those down below. And if you like the story, please let me know by giving it a like. If you thought anything about the story or want to say something about the story, please leave me a comment. And if you want to read the story, please check out my stories on Wattpad and I will link that down below too. And other than that, please wait for chapter 2 because it will be narrated perfectly again. And please subscribe if you're waiting for it at chapter 2. Thank you. Bye-bye.